for me, I think the biggest thing that football taught me was how to overcome adversity. At some point in your life, you're going to have some tough times. You have to have that next play mentality. That cohesiveness and that working together, that's really something special that you can't get in a lot of other areas. When you practice that and you live that in other phases of your life, it, it, it becomes second nature because all you know how to do is fight. But it's not an easy game. If it were easy, everyone would do it. You start to appreciate the, the smaller contributions that people make. You don't just look at the big one because you knew it took six or seven other guys who are unsung. And, uh, you know, you, you can't take shortcuts and be successful doing what they do to make it possible for the guy getting the press clippings or whatever it might be. In this game, whether it's as a coach or a player. So, um, I would certainly say that, um, you know, you definitely got a very quick lesson on how to overcome adversity playing football. Welcome to Football Game Plans Talking with TD. I'm your host, Teron Davenport. Welcome to Talking with TD. We are back, 2017 edition. You know how we do. We bring you constant draft talk with some of the prospects that will be playing on Sunday. Kicking off this season, what better way to do it than with running back out of BYU, a guy who is criminally underrated, Jamal Williams. Jamal, how's it going, man? I'm good. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing well, man. I, I know you just wrapped up training. You're out there in Arizona. Uh, how is how are things going? You know, training with your uncle, getting ready for the combine next week. Uh, you know, it's just going great. Um, pretty much just working hard, doing whatever I can to make sure that I perfect my techniques and everything for the drills, and and just be make sure that I'm at my best. I know it's been a it's been a path. You know, you you've had a journey to this point. Is it kind of sinking in? Like, man, this is it's it's truly do or die time now. Um. Nah, I'm just, I'm just enjoying every minute of it because I knew I'll get to this point because of the way I've just been working hard and, and keeping faith and, and, and staying humble. So it's just, you know, just going through it and just enjoying every minute of it. And I'm, I'm really just enjoying life right now. See, I like that viewpoint. You're not letting the moment be too big. And, and that kind of shows me that, that your mindset, you have a mature mindset. So that's a really good thing. Just, just looking at just, you know, getting to – BYU. I mean, you were recruited by Arizona State, Boise State, Oregon, among other schools, UCLA, your mother's alma mater. Uh, what what went into your decision to go to BYU? Uh, mostly just because uh, um, mostly they just really wanted me from the beginning, and, and it was really a, a loyalty thing with me. They really came at me and really showed that they wanted me from – just you know, taking a chance on me to, and to give me an opportunity to be able to play there, and I, I asked them everything, and they were completely honest about things, and and they really stepped up to the plate too. As me playing as a freshman, whatever I can do, and they they told me the truth: if you're good enough to play, and we'll put you on the field. So I was just grateful for the opportunity of them telling me what's up from the beginning and, and giving me the opportunity to get on the field. Now I know at BYU. There's a different set of standards that are placed on students as well as student athletes. The discipline side of things, how much did going to a school like that with, you know, some of the things that, that happened there, how much did that help you mature just as a man and just, you know, have a better, not even a better, but just, you know, be able to grasp the whole concept of being disciplined and, and carrying yourself correctly? Man, it was, uh, it was a lot. It really went into it. And, I mean, going from, 16 and then and then going to BYU I really wasn't worried about the honor code like that I just thought it was just there and and once you get there then you understand that you really have to abide by the rules or you know or you're gone because they no matter how great of a player you are or how good you are on your team if you don't follow the rules they, they'll let you go so and so pretty much you just got to learn at a at an early age like I did that you need to just follow the rules follow learn how to get disciplined and you know, um, you can just wait because things that they do, other colleges don't. Like, you can't drink, you can't have sex and all that. So, And it really showed me at a young age that you need to just, you know, put those things aside for the future that you want ahead of you. I mean, I could put all that aside for a couple of years so I could be able to make sure that I graduate from a great school and then have a future ahead of me too. Jamal, what's your major? What did you major in at, at BYU? Uh, it was 
sociology. And as far as that is concerned, what was it that, that drew you to, to that point? Because I, I always like to get into this part of it with prospects, uh, with guys, because so many times people say, oh, well, you know, a guy just went to college and he majored in, you know, swimming pool management or something silly like that. You actually majored uh-huh. in a le- something legit, you know what I mean? So what was it that got you to want to take up sociology in school? Um, really it was a, a little bit of help from my mom and my academic advisors that helped me find out what I really wanted to do besides, you know, play football. Cause I really, I really had trouble trying to find a major in it. Uh, and it was really so cause freshman year, I really wasn't worried about it. And then sophomore year, they really pushed me into trying to find one for me. And I really did like sociology because, you know, it, it gives you an opportunity to see other people, other places of the world. And I really like knowing about why certain people do certain things and, and doing surveys and stuff like that, just to see like what's the what's the common um, the common reason people do certain things or, or animals or anything. So I really I really didn't know this thing about me that I, you know, that I'll be in sociology, I thought I'll be in like business or something like that, but I really do enjoy it, and it was just really just, honestly, I really have to give all the credit really to my mom and my my academic advisors for helping me get to the point. Yeah, that's that's really cool, and it's, it's always amazing how in college you, know, you tend to find yourself, so that's a good point, man. I like that you, uh, you brought that out. Now, looking on the field, I mean, if I go in the record books at BYU, uh, I'm going to find the single-game rushing record, 286 yards by – None other than than yourself. <laughs> um, we talked yeah. at the Senior Bowl, and and you told me about some of the guys that that you have patterned your game after. I love the fact that you said Eric Dickerson. I love the fact that you said Walter Payton because I, it it tells me that that you respect the history of the game. You know, a lot of times guys will say, "Oh, Marshawn Lynch or Adrian Peterson, guys that are playing now." So that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. What is it about Eric Dickerson and Walter Payton that? really make you like their game and want to pull aspects of it? I, I really just like the old school part about it. The old school grind hard and, and working your butt off and to get on the field and stand on the field. And mostly Eric Dickerson, really, I just like the way he, he runs. He's a tall running back like myself. And once he gets in the, uh, in the open field, he's, he's really gone. He's really gliding like a gazelle and, and really using those long legs. And uh, Walter Payton, I just really like his off-season workout and how he gets himself ready for the season while running hills and, and doing whatever he can to make sure that he's the best conditioned football player on the field and he's ready to go at all times. Yeah, Eric Dickerson, I remember watching him. Uh, you know, I'm old enough to have watched him, uh, you know, and not, not on film, I mean, but actually watched him play. And the guy was always padded yeah. up. But one of the things, in, in 84, he set, he set the rookie rushing record. And he said that it was off of the same trap play that, that they used to run, and, and he got so many yards off of that. Now, as a running back, you always have your comfort zone. You know, you always have that, that running play that, that you like to go to. What was your favorite play that that coach would call for you at BYU? Uh, we really we really love the stretch plays a lot. Mm. We really did, and that's really where we got most of our money at. And, and it really gave me an opportunity to, to really choose – uh, I'm so many options of holes to go through, especially in and putting my my blockers on a, a great path to getting on a blocks. Um, because of, you know I could just go either outside or I could cut right back in. The holes could be either way; it could be C gap B, or it could be backside A. Sometimes you know you just gotta be able to see them and and know that you know defense they they watch everything you do and they they know that our favorite most of our favorite plays is, is stretch so. They really either play it really fast, and I be patient enough and go all the way back to like back back to I A, and sometimes it really be all the way back there. But you know, it's just a it's just a play that it's not going to always hit in the same spot every time. It really gives you options and, and more, I say, more breathing room to choose from, and, and gives you more more chances to to show what your abilities you can do. You mentioned patience, and that's that's the magic word for running the football. And so many times that's overlooked. So that, that's a really good mention right there. Uh, looking at some of the zone schemes, I mean, so many teams run the zone scheme also. So the fact that you know to have that patience and, and to have that able to have that vision 
to make that backside cut back. That's a that's a really good thing. Uh, I've been seeing some different comps for you. Uh, we we talked again at, at the Senior Bowl, and, and I said Ryan Matthews was a guy who, whose game I, I thought was very similar to yours. I've also seen Matt Forte. Uh, what player in the league currently would you say your game is most similar to? Like if, if someone said, okay, well, you know, they never, for whatever reason, watched you play, and they asked me, hey, who does Jamal play like? What what player would, would you say? Um, I would say more like uh, Ryan Ryan Matthews for sure, and and I like uh, Jay Ajari just the way they run and and the power they run with, and because I'm really a one cut type person, and I, I really like physicalness and, and running the ball hard and and falling forward at all times, and those are the things that they really do well, and and I really like what they do. It really gets me ready to play and. and to see them play with that type of fire and, and know that, you know, they get the fire going and they nobody can stop them. That's really what I like about them. Yeah, Matthews is a very physical runner. That one cut, get up field style is definitely what you have. You can't have wasted movement. It's all about getting that positive yard. So that's a good point. Just to wrap things up, looking at the senior bowl, what was the, the whole experience? You, you know, just to kind of look at some of the the high points for you there. What would you say was, was the biggest thing you were able to pull from the Senior Bowl? Um, I really think it was uh, being coached by already NFL coaches mm-hmm. and, and being able to already see a little glimpse of what NFL playbooks look like. And just to have it for three days, it really showed, you know, what what we have looking forward for us when we get into a, a NFL team and, and – to see what their playbooks look like. So it really was a, a great experience to have. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be Coach Brown and, and to have the running back coaches too from the Browns and, you know, just let them teach us what they know for that short period of time. And it really showed that uh, you really got to be on your game. You really got to know what you're doing out there or you really won't be able to play. Speaking of being able to play, one of the major things, and you mentioned earlier, you don't want to come off the football field. So third down, I mean, you're going to be playing for a team that more than likely has a pretty significant investment in, in a quarterback, the uh, pass protection. What is it that will allow you to be able to take that job on, and, and why should a coach trust you to be able to protect their quarterback on those third down, that blitz pickup type of situation? Well, now I, I really love pass protection. It's really something that I really didn't have a pass for until – my freshman year in college when, you know, it was on the line and I, I tried to cut a dude and, you know, he made the sack and we lost the game off of that. But I feel like we didn't lose off of that play, but I just felt like it was on me for, for the loss off of that. So after that, I really put a commitment into learning how to pass block, learning what I'm doing, learning where the defense is coming from and who I have. And now I have a passion for it. I know where – mostly if my, my blocking assignments are, and I really put effort into it to make sure that my quarterback is safe. So you really got to you gotta make sure that you take care of the dude who's handing the ball off to you because that man, you know, sometimes we, you don't have to rely on him, and you really got to protect that man. And that's what I really like to do. I really love pass blocking. That's where I like to do I love uh, looking at the defense, who come in, looking at safeties if one come down. And I know he either he coming or somebody on that side coming, but it's just really just just it really just takes repetition and, and watching film and knowing what the defense tendencies are. You never bite the hand that feeds you, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much what it boils down to. Hey man, I, I know the combine is next week. You're gonna be faced with some crazy questions. Some of the guys have told me that they've put a paper clip in front of them and said, "Tell me a hundred things you could do with this." They said, tell me, you know, a hundred things you could do with a brick. Are you a dog or a cat? Explain. So I, I, I know your agents and, and the people that you're working with are going to have you ready next week. I definitely look forward to talking to you out there in Indy. And, uh, man, it, it was a, a pleasure talking to you. Like I said, I, I really like watching your game. So, you know, I wish you the best at the next level. And I definitely want to reconvene at some point later on just to – you know, backtrack and, and look at the whole experience, man. Jamal, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it.
for sure. That wraps up this edition of Talking with TD. Be sure to check out all of my interview segments at footballgameplan.com slash talking with TD. If you have any questions or people you want me to sit down with, hit me up on Twitter at tdavenport underscore NFL.